Hello and welcome to the 6++ Plus Show, a podcast for your wargaming and 40k needs. Hobby talk, tactics, tournament reports, lore and much more. We have it all. Please welcome your host for the evening, Tom. When life gives you lemons, make oh, lemonade. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to that 6++ Plus 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 Show. I am your host, Tom, and I am joined tonight by the one and only David Gaylord. How are you doing, David? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Thanks oh, for having me on. It's good to chat yeah, with you guys. Really again. cool to have you on. Um, and because in the in the name of bromance, I've also brought Lee with me because you guys obviously played recently. I was sort of opposite that game and I heard you guys having a really fun time with it all. Um, and you guys have actually played a couple of times yeah. now, I think. Lee's, Lee's the only one of our team that's run into you a couple of times at least. Got run over by, I think it's probably a better way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was EC Thousand Sons, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was a was running tough. over. <laughs> yes. I had, a, I had an absolutely brutal run of casting into Lee's yeah, Terminators yeah. and uh I, say, I rolled a bit over every <laughs> still haunted by like the thirty six uh, mortal wounds every night. <laughs> <laughs> that's just uh that's more wounds than you want mm. definitely oh fantastic well we're, we're here tonight for state of play this is a faction focus ostensibly faction focus we can have fun with it but it's a faction focused episode we look at specific um factions in the game think about where they are in in the meta and and the sorts of things that top players um are doing with them at this moment in time and the faction tonight is astra militarum um which is which is why i've got lee in for backup because guard are not an army i know anything about i'm not a particularly it's not had a huge amount of experience with guard but obviously david as as we'll get to in a moment you've been on on a run with guard uh, and started to started to make some waves with the book so it's a really good time to have you on to talk about it um so we'll, we'll get to the astromus militarum and the little guys in a moment but before we do that david do you want to just tell people a little bit about, about yourself and the sorts of things you're doing in the game and in the hobby world yeah, so I guess I've been on the UK scene since uh, for a couple of years now, uh, since the start of ninth edition when I first started playing. Got a big background in esports and competitive gaming for a long time. But um, yeah, I've uh, formerly played for Team Dice Down. I was ranked four in the world yeah. last year. Uh, won three yeah. super majors, quite a few majors. Got a golden ticket to the oh, world sick. champs. Um, play the game too much, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, more importantly. Um, uh, I run the 40k fireside podcast with Vic BJ, my uh, best mate in the game, and uh, ranked two in the ITC in the world mm-hmm. last year, where we chat about yeah. tons of stuff, much like the content yeah. you guys produce, with just not as many good diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's then um, yeah, I'm captain, well, co-captain of the of of my new team, Team Ignite. Well, our new team, still getting used to how to do yeah. all that stuff, but um, yeah, with just myself, Brian Sight. Yogi Johansson, Vic BJ, and uh, maybe a couple yeah. of people. So it's, exciting it's super visit. exciting. Yeah, that's a, it's a, a new mover and a shaker in the team's world is a really interesting thing to see. So I, I appreciate that's all still taking shape, but I'm really I'm really looking forward to seeing what it ends up being. And um, as you know, in, in Brian, yeah. you've just got one of my favorite people in 40K involved as well, because Brian is such a gentleman and such a talented player as well. So yeah, really, really exciting times. Okay, wonderful. Oh, golden ticket! I'm jealous. That's going to be super cool, right? That's 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 going to be an experience. <laughs> getting getting the the Willy Wonka 40k factory experience. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was uh, I was so zoned in on my game at that point that I didn't even realize um, until someone pointed it out about 20 minutes after the game, and I was like, "Oh, sweet!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. Yeah, I've, um, just to context, I guess if um, people don't know, I, I managed to win the Southampton yeah. Super Major beating Manny Chima in finals uh, yeah. last weekend with God. So I've been playing quite a bit, but Lee and I have also played at the ITT mm. and um, we had quite a few yeah. different lists and Lee ended up besting me in that one and that taught me a lot mm. about the mirror. So I put that mm. into action in Southampton actually as well. Yeah. So same deployment and uh, yeah. I, I, I fixed a couple of holes uh, in that hey. one. So Lee's, Lee's uh, really I'm sharp. 10% of that well. victory now. And um, his army is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lee's uh, Lee's army is painted beautifully as well. So I was uh, actually doing my sentinels uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> so in uh, Lee's painting, but um, you've got an awesome. In fact, Lee's got the greatest Leondas, which is Luke Skywalker from um, from Episode Four um, on the um, on the, taunt- on the oh, Beast in the so Snow, good. which is uh, absolutely yeah, it's so good. It's the best <sighs> thing. It's just, it, I can't stress enough. 
the, how outrageous it is that Lee painted that army so quickly and so well. It, it we we were obviously in the in the chat Ooh. and it was all coming through and he was getting the units done and it was just the the turnaround for the standard of the paint job on that army um, was amazing. I just think I just I, I don't know how what you had to do, Lee, or what what sort of dark pacts you had to make, but you got it done. Six weeks, <laughs> six weeks of late evenings that was, but it came out lovely. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a very yeah, good completely. job. Yeah, because yeah, we ended up getting the best painted team at that event, which was very funny. And I yeah. think I, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's the guard. I'm pretty sure it was the torn torn that got us there, which was which was really really good fun. Okay, fantastic. So, what we're going to do then is we'll we'll start with the basics, right? We'll start about start with sort of Astra Militarum, what they mean to each of you, what your kind of relationship to the army is, but then thinking more generally about what you think their role is in the game more generally. This is something I'm always interested in, right? I feel like even across editions and across moments in time, different armies have a sort of character and essence that that does stay the same, you know, from 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 moment to moment and is useful, I think, for people to understand before they start unpacking the particulars of a given moment. So David, if you want to go first, you want to just take us through yeah, your relationship and background with Guard and, and what you think their kind of essence is. Yeah, so I've been a I've been a I originally got into the game when I was like twelve years old playing Turinids in on my farm with like two of my friends and playing Amazing. bottle caps. So Guard is about as far away as you can get from <laughs> yeah. Turinids, I think. Um but it's one of the OG kind yeah. of books, right? In that sense, so it's kind of got that, um, it's got the history mm. to it. But yeah, for, so I've I've only recently um, mm-hmm. jumped onto them after I played Las Vegas Open. I was only focusing mm. on that, uh, and then so I've, after my um, Thousand Suns got you know lost AOC and weren't going to be as good, I wanted to pick up an army that I thought was really going to have longevity mm. to it, and I wasn't really sure on Marine Chapter. So I thought, you know, God, no one seems to be talking about. Well, everyone sort of just said they were really good, but no one seems yeah. to be like actually we've solved it this is the thing so i thought this is a nice space to move into um and i think that you know their role is the it's a bit of a classic shooting army but it's actually got a lot of dynamics that a traditional shooting army perhaps mm. doesn't have um for mm. example mechanized infantry it's got the teleport it's got more uh, indirect for mortars and it's actually got you know a lot of little troops and it, it's got a combination of chaff plus big centerpieces which um, I think is a lot different from, like, say, Admech that I used to play, which obviously had the flyers, but, you know, you were basically on the ground a lot of time and you've had a little bit of a more flat army, um, for lack of a better word. You know, you didn't have a lot of extremely different profiles and one like that. So, yeah, I think it's probably the preeminent shooting army in the game right now. I think it's definitely got a lot more tools than an army like uh, Iron Hands, for example, but it some it, it all, at the same time it's not all it's not all roses because it lacks some of the tools that Iron Hands really has access mm. to, right? Like, doesn't have um, fast um, melee components to it, which is a huge, um, which really just shapes the way the whole codex functions in so many ways, right? Like not having those um, fast um, melee yeah. options that can breach your yeah, walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, caveat can breach yeah. walls. <laughs> Very important there. Um, really changes how just entirely the way the list play um the, the faction plays but i don't know about me but um, um, what do you think lee well so i'm very new to guard and we kind of had a hole didn't we in our teams kind of set up and uh we, we did we needed someone did. who could paint quickly and take the brunt of the financial <laughs> battering of starting a new army and that guy was me oh you're putting this on us now yeah, you're putting this on us bank so balance no one us. made you go and play guard lee <laughs> Um, but no, I, I, I liked the aesthetic. I like the kind of uh, tin hat World War Two kind of aesthetic of guard. Um, yeah. And again, yeah. they are actually a really fun army to paint and really kind of forgiving for people who are possibly not yeah. the, the best painters, but you can come out with a really nice kind of aesthetic if you put a, bit, a few hours in. Yeah. Um, so yeah. again, that team's yeah. spot was mine. I put, I put the effort in, I, I learned it, I kind of soaked myself in every kind of resource online to find out more about them. You um, did. And they are they are a tricky army to pick up, a tricky army to actually play. Um, and yeah. kind of the other background that I really got me into them was all the um, old literature. So like uh, all your Gaunt's Ghost mm. style no- novels, your Dan Abnett's. Yeah. Um, yeah. They really paint mm. them in a, in a great light where you get that kind of human feel to them in the dark future. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. I can only really agree with David about kind of the way they play. I think it's a nice step forwards because obviously they've always been known for their kind of artillery, their basilisks, the kind of heavy bombardments yeah. that you mm-hmm. used to get from all their big artillery pieces. And I think it's it's nicely kind of sidestepped that for this edition and made them a bit more mm-hmm. um, 
multifaceted, I think is the word, where you have to yes. really apply yeah. those um, troops on the ground. Obviously, the, I think the, uh, the secondaries almost sum it up. You need those boots on the ground if you're going to play well. You have to yeah. use that command yeah. structure yeah. to actually get the best out of those units. Um, and the fact that you've moved away from those big artillery pieces makes the tanks a lot more interesting as well to support those other pieces you're pushing around mm. the board. I think that's mm. me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I and I think like, um, well, I, I just, just a chip in on the end there. I think because, um, you know, when we think about it in terms of uh, faction design philosophy, because we have so much World War Two, you know, 20th century war time, um, so much of that is built on yeah. that, right? Like there's, I bet, you know, obviously there's people in GW that have, you know, been a part of the service, um, part of defense that have have brought that into them, right? So when you actually play guard, you, you know, you kind of go, oh, my army feels kind of a, like, I have said once on a podcast, like, it's quite inflexible the way that you play it. And then I was like, oh, the, 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 like, the secondary is literally inflexible command. So, like, there's so many things like that, like full throttle, like gunners, like kill on sight and stuff like that, that feels like you're kind of, you feel like, you're, you know, you're a little bit of a little kid again sometimes yeah. playing them, uh, which is kind of unique to any army, I think, in uh, in 40K. It's kind of got its own little... You know, no, I think, I think I've said that before, haven't I, Tom? But in the, on the way to tournaments, I'll get to push around some tanks for a few hours making brum brum noises yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> shooting yeah. the guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And it's they are one of those armies which is to play against as well as to play. I think, I think they're super immersive because you've got you know you've got humans, you've got a human perspective on the board, which actually I think is really exciting, especially yeah. when they're playing into something really weird, right? Where you get guard lined up against tyranids or demons or something. There's just a real beauty to the game, yeah. and I think, you know, you guys are both talking about dynamism, which I think is really relevant because I think that's where this book is a success, right? Because I think historically for me, Guard have always felt like an army that do a gunline thing, but at times have suffered from being a bit static and have been vulnerable to to being caught out and tied up in places by things without solutions, which I think at times, especially in 8th and then early ninth, was a real frustration for Guard players. And what I like about this book is that Guard still have that ordered feel there's still a sense of the hierarchies and the combinations and the synergies having as you say that like that character that military ethos in there and you could got to use those well but at the same time it's a book that's given you some tricks and tools to actually bring a bit of speed bring a bit of maneuverability catch people out a little bit yourselves um, which is really exciting and they're an army that obviously they don't sorry after you what I would say is they didn't, they didn't actually, so typically, you know, in a book, they'll be like, uh, this is as I see it, they'll be like, this is a shooting army, they'll give it fallback yeah. and shoot, right? So for Admech, they just gave fallback and shoot to literally yeah. anything. Um, so, they, you know, they didn't do that for Guard, which I think was such a good um, design yeah. philosophy. They're like, you can fallback on yeah. some things, but your tanks, you won't be able to fall back and shoot. But then, of course, they introduced the turret yeah. weapon, which allows you to shoot out of combat, which is like a really cool yeah. design in terms of like, you know how the game, way the game plays out and stuff like that and they really managed to get the feel and um you know game design and fairness you know for like a bit of a balance right on the you know right yeah, on I the dot agree. here i think um you know especially with the turret weapon like that's really cool and the shoot on death like vengeful salute <laughs> you know <it's, laughs> i hate vengeful salute i lost a tantalus like, in one volley to oh, that thing <laughs> so good <laughs> yeah so um, a lot of a lot of really cool aspect things done. I might go and read the uh, Gaunt's oh, Ghost book actually. I mean, it's good about fun. That. So um, if, it's, if it's good, then uh, I'll go check it out. Definitely worth doing. Yeah, I, all, I agree with that. I think the other thing that has that same feel is the orders, where I think I think orders are a triumph this time, where you've mm. you've got some quite remarkable possibilities with orders, but there are costs because you're only ever going to have you know a few of these, in, and you have to be very careful. And you have again, your whole army has to be set up in particular ways to make these work. Um, and again, yeah. that's that's how c- good command structure should work, right? And I think I think they ma- they gave them a bunch of tools that felt very relevant and give them lots of play into situations that before I think would have been nigh on impossible to manage without some of these tricks and tools, right? So it's yeah, it's a puzzle. It, it's made it feel like more like a puzzle both for the player and for the person playing into them, which I think is what a good ninth army is in the main. That's where the interesting interactions come from. Brilliant. Okay, right. Let's talk place in the meta. David, you've recently had some experience in the meta. Where do you think God can get you in the meta these days? <laughs> Um, so I think the best way I've managed to describe this so far is that Guard are an army that have a lot of yeah. reach. And so they may not be the most busted thing that you can pick up and play, but I do believe that they have the capability or the reach of winning a super major, you know, insert whatever size mm-hmm. here, right? 
Um, so, you know, I don't think the average player will do very well with them. Uh, I think there are some parts of the army which are very tricky to operate, but I do think in in a very good hand, they are one of the top three armies in the game. I would put them second behind Dark Angels. I think Dark Angels are decisively better in almost all aspects. They have better secondary speed, forgivingness, direction of play. Um, but Guard are an army that, if played well, can be extremely well-rounded and, if optimized, can be extremely high levels of output as well. So they probably have the most output in the game if you sequence everything everything correctly. But so, you know, I think armies in general, we want them to be, you know, we want them to be balanced and we want them to have yeah. high reach. So ideally in Ford, if you every army would 50% win rate and be yeah, able to win that, a, win a tournament. Dream. Now, Guard, I think it's a little bit... I've got, I mean, it'll never yeah, happen, yeah. of course. <laughs> and an idea... And, and I think the Guard win rate does reflect that to some mm. extent. And, you know, recently at my tournament and when I've played people, I've asked them, you know, have you played against Guard before, et cetera? And to be honest with you, the majority of players say that they actually just crushed Guard. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, I played against Guard. I crushed it. And I'm like, yeah, I can kind of understand that because some people play some lists that are quite mm. static and design, one-dimensional in design. Um, and I think those lists have a tendency to fall mm. over and... You know, if you if you just think that you're going to take seven Lehman Russes and you know order Ruru on one hit across your whole army and push people off the board, like you're in for a yeah. surprise. Like it's not going to happen, um, which is good. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like we don't, you know, we don't want to have data sheets that stat check people. So if you're, you know, if you're an incumbent player, I think Guard are definitely a very interesting option to look back, look into. Their codex is very deep. There are a lot of things that people haven't even explored yet, and I don't think the idea of Kassigan being, ex- you know carrying the book is actually anywhere near as big a deal as people mm. think it is. You know, Kassigan are really strong, but there are things in that meta that are equally yeah. as strong. You know, Dark Angels yeah, Terminators yeah. are a freaking nightmare to kill. Uh, they get so much stuff with such good saves and such good defensive profiles that actually Kassigan balance out that matchup yeah. a little bit. So, you know, in a world where Kassigan get capped on their mortal wounds and Dark Angels, you know, get some you know, point sykes or whatever Codex Warfare gets balanced out, you know, Guard are still in a very, very good place after that. Um, and there's so much stuff that people haven't explored. So there's lots of uh, lots of room to knock around. Like Lee and I, for example, play, you know, lots of combinations of different units. So, yeah, um, what do you think, Lee? I think, uh, yeah, kind of agreeing with what you said at the end there, there's, there's so much unexplored territory with Guard. Um, mm. You're seeing uh, people trying out kind of heavy, just kind of just infantry, um, hordes across the board. You've got those skew lists that you talked about, David, where people are spamming the tanks. Um, triple dawn lists. Um, I think we might see. Triple dawn. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking at a, a kind of infantry artillery list with the kind of the um, okay, okay. introduction of mm-hmm. regimental orders on things like Earthshaker carriages, um, which Whoa. are is a filthy. Mm-hmm by the way, absolute filth. We'll talk yeah. about that more later. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a big day in the chat when you discovered that thing. You were, <laughs> you were very happy that's about gold. <laughs> um, the, the field ordnance battery can also get regimental yeah. orders for taking yeah, yeah. There you go. So much, so yeah. much good artillery there. And again, I think with some units, like we said, Tom, some units are coming out for the Space Marines, i.e. the uh, the Vengor launchers. Um, I think that's going to mm. also... Mm automatically change the way that guard is played because they've got their own outline of sight. They're going to be picking up Kassikin that are unprotected for fun. Um, but I think mm. unexplored is, is a good way of putting it because I think there are so many combinations. Scions, Scions are amazing. Um, with Drill Commander mm-hmm. and um, their own command squads, their output is nigh on equal to Kassikin's really. Admittedly, you don't get the mm. crazy... Is Drill Commander the is Drill Commander the rapid That's fire it, at maximum yeah. at normal range? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lots of options. Um and like I think people I mean, people haven't been forced to mm. kind of look, yeah. I think. Um and it's been such a short time though. Like, you know, the tournament scene hasn't really been super active past LVO. So a lot of the a lot of the people that would maybe jump, um, maybe people like myself and, and Nassim and what like that, you know. We, you know, we can't actually, like, you can't explore a whole book no. that quickly. You know, for example, everyone plays Born Soldiers, but mechanized infantry is also interesting. Um, armored superiority is also mm. interesting. Um, you know, ignore cover is interesting. Like, there's a lots of, there's so many different things there as well. And, you know, maybe you, you could w- wrap your whole list design around, you know, not playing Born Soldiers, for example, if, if, if Born Soldiers is not good after some things get changed, for, mm. for instance. Um, 
you know, I've my list design philosophy has gone all the way from seven Russes all the way down to uh, lowest I played was two, but I played um, two Chimeras at one point. I played like lot like a hundred and ten troop at one point. Um, I played a bunch of different stuff, and it all felt like it had like okay, this is pros and you know this is the pros and these mm. are the cons. Um, because oftentimes the trooper obviously what going to score your secondaries most of the game. So they might not have the most output, but they enable your secondaries. So there's good balance within the yeah. book there. Like everything has its mm. role, mm. so to speak. You know, you're like, oh, my Russes can be like my big back- backfield batteries. My, my troop can be you know, going forward. I can transport that advances or I can have sentinels that go forward and, and stuff like that. So it's a um, great book overall, yeah. I think. Um, props to GW for, um, for doing yeah, a good definitely. job on it. And Leontis is really cool as one and the, some of the models are beautiful you know um rogel dawn i think is universally probably the most adorned <laughs> model right yeah. um, it, uh, it looks yeah, fantastic man. and like personally i'm not the biggest fan of the unit but like it looks yeah. so good yeah. that like, I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. absolutely <laughs> yeah and i think i think as you say i think it's it's not a book where the raw power took it straight to the top, which again is, is a testament to the good writing. It actually has taken a little while for players like yourself, Nassim, to start turning up and demonstrating what it what it can do and what its what its ceiling can be. Um and I think mm. it 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 feels like a book that will live a couple of lives before before we move on to new things, and that's exciting, right? It's, you know, it, it feels well placed to to navigate any any nudges on on balance and hopefully it's not treated too harshly anyway because as, as we as we've discussed actually it's not it's not in that kind of oppressive position that some books have been in um and there is yeah in these traits yeah. there is there are potential other builds and some interesting things to do so i think that's a massive positive the, what i would say oh are we, can we go on to yeah the if you'd like to yeah yeah okay yeah one thing that i would say is a negative on the book is that it has the potential of just blanking some matchups, which I don't think is yeah. healthy for the game. For example, Mortars and Remain Vigilant are yeah. extremely oppressive against um, both Gene Steeler Corp, yeah. as you'll know, <laughs> uh, Chris, and, uh, and Demons, right? So there's some interactions in the book there and some profiles and mechanisms that can almost just shut out armies by themselves, like you know, 165 points of Mortars with Finial and and, an, and a Remain yeah. Vigilant, for example, is extremely difficult for some mm-hmm. armies to deal with. And I can appreciate that perhaps on the other side of the table, if that was the matchup, it would be like, uh, you know, this is kind of like, you know, how am I going to get around this? Like it fundamentally is just a shield against my army's, you know, against my army's yeah. sword that you can't break. Um, yeah. You know, that would, I think the Mortars is probably the yes. one, you know, the one thing, right? It's kind of yeah, I, right? I think I think artillery always is one of those things that, that can can feel harsh on people. I th- with guard, I don't resent it so much because I feel like guard should always be an army where artillery is a, a factor in what they do. But it's it's finding that sweet spot where it's relevant but not oppressive. And the f- the fin- finials. I mean, we'll yeah. talk about the finial later because obviously it's amazing. But it is by its very nature, it's one of those relics that just goes, oh yeah, no, <laughs> and, and and that people people yeah. struggle with that. Right? But you know, having said that, that's um, that's a really meta-defining yeah. thing, and I think as long as it's not yeah. oppressive, which I think God is not, I don't think you could say it's oppressive. Like Dark Angels Terminators are a meta-defining, mm-hmm. right? It's okay to have meta-defining things or things that turn the meta from you know uh, a triangle into a bit more of a yeah. square, right? Um, and add yeah. more facets to it that you have to possibly think about. Like Knights for me are a good mm-hmm. example of that. You know, where you can bond mm-hmm. and have a really kind of skewed priority, um, skewed dynamic to the army. That being good in the meta is actually, I mean, most people hate knights, but that to me is kind of a good thing because it's something you have to consider when doing your yep. list building and, and whatnot like that. So yep. it's it's pros No, and completely. And I, I think, as you say, it's about having that rock, paper, scissors thing going on in in, in many different forms. And, and I, I, I do think for guards, some of these tools, which we'll talk about, they need to, to have an interesting and dynamic game into, into certain armies. And without them, they'd be in, in, a, in a very one-dimensional place, which would make life much harder for them. Um, cool. Okay. I mean, are there any other sort of challenges or negatives for you guys as you see it at this moment in time? What kinds of weaknesses do you feel like guard have? What are the, what are the what sort of major downsides? I think that your classic is the, uh, the lack of melee combat. Admittedly, you've got the mm. you've got your horses now. Um, obviously, <laughs> horses against uh, space age weaponry—they're a bit brittle, um, and again, quite easily picked up by <laughs> other people's mortars. Um, yeah, and the fact that they're cavalry, <laughs> which uh, means that they've got great movement, but when yes. you're trying to get out from behind a ruin, especially an L-shaped UKTC ruin, um, your movement is probably no better than a six-inch moving marine. Um, so I think it is that's that's still 
uh, again, it does put you into your box, doesn't it? It puts you into your, you're a shooting army with infantry rather than some kind of, mm. uh, aggressive offensive melee squad but I, th- I think that's needed i think in a way it would be weird if they had that opportunity but i think that is the built-in mm. negative to any astra militarum army yeah yep yeah um exactly the same for me and it would just be too mm. strong if they had that answer like it would be the perfectly rounded army and you know if if i had just had another 200 points for vanguard veterans mm. like to dig people out of a ruin that's tight to get line of sight on then that would just be far too strong because that would that's the main thing that is obviously very good against guard. So, yeah, yeah I think I it's good that they didn't do that. And, you know, we've got some things, but yeah. they're a bit slow, yeah. right? You know, we've got the big yeah, as you say, Ogrins, I've not seen yeah. them used a ton yet. I know Sentinels have that little zzz, little arm little arm going oh, on, yeah. right? The Sentinels are the best. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> salami yeah. slice. We're gonna, say, we, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, always been, it's always been so cute, that little. It's very Wallace and Gromit, the little robot arm. It's got. It's, it's very, very yes, funny. Yes. Um, no, that's great. It's like the, uh, what can you call it? Like the fridge when they're Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's exactly, you know? exactly like that little guy with his little his little skis. You know, it's, it's so good. Um, okay, cool. I mean, that, as I say, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Sentinels. Cause I feel like there's a whole, there's a whole spiel to an ode to Sentinels to be done at some point. But let's, let's start with some of the key kinds of, traits and relics that you guys sort of Im- implement in your builds right in terms both in terms of fact at the level of sort of uh sub faction choice and then you know warlord traits and additional relics what what kinds of things do you think are the key tools that you build around at the moment uh, um go for it lee you hit it right from the okay. top and I'll fill um, in as we said i think born soldiers is a bit of an easy gimme i think it stops you having to think yeah. too yeah, much yeah. and especially when it's a new codex and you've only got a, <laughs> a certain amount of weeks to get to grips with it it's so good that it's probably why mm. so many people haven't really pushed past it yet um the fact yeah. that you're exploding um sorry auto wounding on sixes um is is amazing especially when you're putting out so much volume of fire and you can tweak all your units yeah. well go on Here's a- Here's Go a on. trick question. Here's a question, Lee. What is the second part of Born Soldiers? Because I genuinely can't um, remember. You've got to shine your boots <laughs> in the morning. There's a second part? I, I don't even think I remember what Born Soldiers' second part is. Each Isn't time a good? model with this doctrine makes a ranged attack. No, that's that bit. No, there's only one part. There is only there's one only part. one part? Oh, oh well, there you, you go. Know. Okay. okay, there's no, there is no additional yeah. thing. But that's it's just so so good oh, in and of itself. You're right. That that's all you're right. right. Sorry, there is a second part. <laughs> You do, yeah. You get um, if you're within six inches of a model of this model, models in the platoon unit can use the officer's leadership characteristic instead of their own. <laughs> See, meta defining. It's even that, better than exactly, we thought. Right? That's actually quite good. I, I, yeah. And so that just goes to show, like how how little people have looked yeah, beyond. They've not soldiers, even read right? the second. They haven't even part read the whole the truth. Truth. So blah, 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 dude. That's so, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, to the end. I have some stuff about leadership. I'm not going to take morale. I'm going to kill them. It's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. I've never used it. I've never used it. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Wait, but people what tuning it into is, this right? podcast it's just, it's just, are uh, leaving with something a little bit extra now already. Yeah. Look at that value. You've, all, you've all learned the, se- the secret <laughs> source, okay? You know, David David took Southampton thanks to the officer's leadership or a bit of born soldiers that I wouldn't hear otherwise. That was the... the, the, the <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah, but obviously, born, born soldiers massively powerful in terms of how you sort of. I mean, I, I know you've got like little sort of sub regimental upgrades for some of the other yep. units, like the Kazakhin, right? Are there, are there any? Are there any other sort of niche upgrade picks that you guys like to sort of get the most out of them? Do you want to go with this one, David? Yeah, the, yeah. So the best one would be brutal okay. strength, which is um, only common because you take it on the Kaskin unit, like you explained. So Brutal um, Strength neglects you and ignore the heavy um, David, with, with that one as well. And the I reason don't, that combo... You didn't take that Ooh. in the team tournament, did you? Yeah. Yeah. No, so so I was completely <laughs> wrong in that. Um, that was the um, that was the incorrect loadout to take, ah. um, which was um, which I subsequently remedied uh, at the ITT. Ah. Um, so the, the for those people that don't know, you want to play the Kaskin unit with um, Brutal Strength, which is ignore the heavy penalty, and I think it gives plus one strength to melee as well. But um, then you order your Kaskin to be heavy three instead of rapid fire one, so it nets you about six or seven right. shots. Um, and so when you split, 
two more shots. Um, that's the correct, mm. as as I now believe as well. That's the getting that getting that volume. Um, so that's kind of the only common one that you see. And then you've got mechanized infantry, which again you are playing born soldiers, but you get it with your Kassikan unit as the selected, which means you can move after your Chimera, uh, disembark oh, after that's your Chimera super nice. as well. Yeah. So super super nice. Yeah, it's nice. And then you've got one uh, the others. Um, the other one I suspect might be okay is armored superiority which is uh, your Sentinels and tanks count as, or your vehicles count as OPSEC and A5 models, I think, on tanks, um, which is quite powerful. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, maybe mechanized infantry is kind of good. Like, who knows, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of room. Yeah, it's like, one of those ones I'd like to see it tried just to see what the sort of ceiling on it is if you if you go a bit wider in a build with it. But as you say, the, the fact that you can sort of mm -hmm. tailor your Kazakin to get the most of it is, is really, really nice. And again, slightly compounds why we've seen Born Soldiers, because you're like, well, if I want that, I've got it anyway. Yeah. I can just I can just bring some Kazakin to make sure yeah. to make sure that it gets in there. How about warlord traits? And importantly, you can't you can't take born soldiers on ah. Kazakin. So you can't be armored superiority and take born right. soldiers, which is something I was looking at yesterday <laughs> because I was like, well, you know, maybe I could play something else. I just, I just play the Born Soldiers Kaskin unit. Uh, okay, no, okay. Yeah, so how about Warlord traits? Are there any relevant Warlord traits in the book? Some really good ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously Master Tactician, the, um, oh, yeah. the redeploy. And it's the right. best redeploy. And the reason it's the best redeploy yes. um, is the fact that, like, now let's say you're playing Tau. The Tau do their redeploy. You don't have to bother. You can watch them do their redeploy, and then yours happens at the start of the first battle round after they've redeployed, uh, and you get to do yours. Yeah. What? The sequence is... <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. I didn't the know sequence that. Is, is, is different. Oh, wow. So if two people have... Oh. Wow. So if two people have redeployed, like... Do, okay, does that work with Phantasm? Ooh, is Phantasm at the beginning I'm of the first... I'm not sure about that one, but we, uh, and there was a, there's a team... Because um, okay. one of my teammates at the team tournament was playing his tau into Astra Militarum and uh, they had to call the TO over to uh, yeah. judge it and they went through the uh, the wording and with the tau the tau's um, yeah that's during tricky deployment, interesting and there's Sneaky. his during battle round very good ah uh, so, there you go I'm learning yeah that's definitely relevant yeah that's you, <laughs> you <school immediately. laughs> but, um, yeah. I mean that's that's a very very good one yeah. it's a yeah, great great wall or trait and just yeah just because of the way it's written it becomes even better yeah, super strong and very nice. useful in an army where the positioning is so important in those early shooting exchanges, being able to move stuff. Around. Oh, completely. So you can you can any, front line any, your tanks. You can um, obviously put units back into reserve to support boots on the ground later in the game. It gives you so much flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, redeploy is actually the strongest warlord mm -hmm. trait in the game, bar you know unique yeah. warlord traits that are obviously situation very powerful. Um, I personally think that they should introduce a one CP redeploy one unit to the game yeah. as a general stratagem. I think that would round out a lot of um, yeah. a lot of things. Um, but I mean, it gives you the flexibility of increasing your win percentage and go first situations, and then obviously increasing your win percentage and go <laughs> yeah. second situations. So it should, in theory, net <laughs> net you just raw yeah. win percentage because um, you get to take advantage of both yeah. first and second. So it's very, yeah. very powerful. And actually, as Chris mentioned, what you can do is start your units on the board, put them back into strat reserve, strategic reserve, and then bring them on turn four and five because of the way that Arcs of Omens is um, structured now. Because your units start on the battlefield, they don't have to, they don't um, succumb to the rules of uh, arriving from yeah. turn three. So um, yeah. that only applies to units that did not start on the battlefield. So when you redeploy them off the battlefield, you can come and turn yeah. four and five. So um, rules is written thing right there, but um, it's quite quite super powerful super well. powerful. And I need to apologise, David, because I've misled you. I'm on Chris's account for this, but it's Tom here that I'm, you're talking to. So I've, I've got I've got the, I've got I know oh, oh. I've got Chris's name. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I've, like... I've, I've I must have completely baffled him because I've just got Chris's name on all the all the software. I'm oh, so no. sorry, my man. I've sent <laughs> I've sent you off the wrong a misdirect. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I know, so I know, I know. And we just we just got too many brunettes running around in our team. I didn't read that. Yeah, I no, like, I was like, I must have completely baffled him. Um, so, in terms of, were, were there any other sort of crucial warlord traits, or is it purely mm. the, the the redeploy that is the sort of the special source? There's what there's one good one other good crucial. one. You know, I, I, I like yeah. superior tactical training um, placed okay. on a command squad, mm. and the and what that gives you is the ability to choose between perfectus. Um, orders and mechanized orders. You're always going to choose Perfectus mm -hmm. um, because it gives you the ability yeah. to launch a Perfectus order 24 inches away using your Master Vox. 
So you can right. really throw mm. some range on those perfectus orders, which can get you out of some sticky situations. It's good. Mm. Yeah, good shot. I was debating taking that on my um, Death mm. Core Marshal this weekend, actually, just to get the perfectus order from the transport. So um, that was an interesting decision. They've also got the five up gain of yeah. CP, which I, is, um, you know, I mean, it's always, always always not nice interesting, you know, yeah. just. If you start on three CP, it's a good break point to um, to use that uh, use that uh, wall, yeah wall or trap. Um, then, unfortunately, Iron Hand Straken has a really good one, but you can't really take it because you've got Lord Solar. Like, I would play him if I could take that wall or trap because I mean, how bad oh, is, is Iron Hand Straken? So right? cool. like, I mean, come he's on, absolutely like, badass. The dude just wants to get the combat yeah, slaps yeah, people yeah. up, but like you have to. Play <laughs> All right. I mean, you've got you've got you've got your core yeah. ones there. You know, redeploy, yeah. five up gain a CP, and then a whole bunch of yeah. other flexible ones. The other one that Lee mentioned was the Scion one, where in range you can rapid fire at mm. maximum range, um, which is interesting. Um, and yeah, I mean, anyone who's got the suite of warlord traits that good, you mm. know, you, that's yeah. a good start. Um, when stuff that benefits the whole army in a very flexible way for the cost of a warlord trait, it's really really nice. Yeah. And so obviously the relics now. It, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if we can make this a, a conversation that goes beyond just the finial. I don't know, but we'll start We'll start with the finial. Do you want to tell people about this absolute maniac relic? <laughs> yeah. So th- this relic is, is one of the most powerful yeah. relics in the game. What I would say, though, and I just want to caveat this before I go into how good it is, I don't know how good guard would be without this um, because you would su- your shooting platforms suffer a lot through things in the normal game that you need mm-hmm. to ignore. So an army very similar to this is Tau, who then have the ignore hit modifiers and pluses to hit, which which round that out, right? Both BS4 platforms, but they have, you know, exploding sixes, re-rolls, full hit, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and obviously, they, you know, they fly and move super fast. So, you know, um, that's, that's, I think that's a good oh, thing absolutely. to keep in yeah. mind, like uh, when comparing the two. Yeah. So the finial um, is currently attached to a unit, which is very important. So it's an aura from a unit, and your, that, that's your command squad, which is a six-man unit usually, or a five-man unit. So it can cover more or less your entire army if you yeah. play well. Now, what it enables you to do is ignore any or all ballistic skill modifiers. So you'll always hit on your normal ballistic skill, or if you get plus one to hit, you'll be hitting on threes, and you can ignore the negative ones. It then uh, makes it so your opponent cannot ignore damage. Now, this has been FAQ'd so that, um, and clarified so that a unit that is phase capped, i.e., can only take three wounds per phase, uh, counts as quote ignoring damage. So you can get through phase capped things, which, to be honest with you, is not that important. Um, you know, it's basically just bar <laughs> uh, at the moment. It's not super yeah. common. Um, and then aside from that, maybe yeah. the bloodthirster. But then you know we haven't got. Um, I can't even remember That's what cool. he's called anymore. Um, you know, nine wound Cal Abaddon. Space Marines. Is it Abaddon? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That old yeah, terror. <laughs> Everyone's not running around crazy, yeah, yeah. Else, right? So, you know, it, that's um, that's good. But what it means is that your opponent cannot reduce mm. your damage. Now, that's the really big one because you have a lot of damage two shots and you have a lot of uh, mortal wounds that come up from one particular squad, the Cascan mm. squad. So your opponent not being able to reduce your Blessed skill or reduce damage that you're going to deal to them is is really important. Um, and that kind of enables a lots, you know, lots of parts of the army because if that were not the case, you know, bl- negative blister skill modifiers really hurt guard. And that's the thing where Lehman Russes really struggle because, you know, as soon as you say hitting on fours, well, the target gives you plus one to hit. So and it, it, let's say, for example, we're shooting across the board. You're shooting my Lehman Russ through dense cover. You know, you, you take the minus one, so you're hitting on fours. And then I pop smoke, so I'm minus one to hit. You're hitting on fives all of a sudden. And on a gun that, you know, maybe has D6 shots plus three, you roll six shots, you know, you're re-rolling ones, you might get three hits, and then you got a wound one more after that, you might get a wound through, right? So there's a lot of um that, that negative blister skill modifier really hurts guard. And I don't I genuinely don't believe, as much as I know Finial is very powerful, I don't know if if it was nerfed that it would um it, guard would still be kind of at the level that they currently are. So it's um it's an interesting yeah. one. I don't know. The, you got no, a different take on it? Absolutely broken. Um, but it, it's necessary. <laughs> it's it's just yeah. so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's. I would be shocked if I saw a guard list without it in it. I'd be trying to find that person and, and tell them yeah. the way, errors of their ways <laughs> um, because it yeah. is it's just it's so good. It, as I say, it holds up quite exactly. a lot of the infantry shooting, the core shooting in your army. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I completely agree with you, David. In as much as I think, I think it so, something like it has to be in the book, otherwise. Guard are just getting run over, but we've already, we've already talked about the lack of melee push. So that's a phase you haven't got. They're not a psychic army, really. I mean, you could have one of those little guys with who's having a migraine in there if you want, but it's like it's not it's not <laughs> an army that's going to pack that multi phase. Which means that if you don't have something like yeah. this, and, you're in real trouble, right? That's that's the problem. Yeah, and, and so Advex yeah. had that as well in the past. You know, another actually Advex is nowhere near as um one one dynamic as, as mm. Guard is actually. Um, but you know they had the Raymond of the Technomata, which allowed you to ignore hit or yeah, whisker yeah. modifiers uh, as well so every you know shooting based army seems to get fall back to some degree and ignore blisker modifiers yeah. to some degree um you know the important part is just don't print it over your whole army perhaps so um tau get to ignore it with uh, you know certain units or whatnot so maybe you know the finial just needs to go back to only being the better yeah. person yeah that's that's kind they of the solution yeah. The yeah, yeah 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 just have it on the model um i think it would just be absolutely a-okay yeah. after that um, but as it currently stands, it's very powerful, and it's something that you've got to think about yeah. your list design um, when yeah, going absolutely. into it. Other relics, you know, you've got your standard suite of <laughs> random pistols <laughs> that no one's ever going to take. You know, yeah, never going to take that. Um, a couple, like there's another relic if you play multiple command squads to get a four up and vulnerable on, on okay. the whole squad, okay. which is quite interesting because it makes them hmm. quite tanky. The, the 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 other common relic is the gatekeeper, which is just a straight up better plasma executioner. So it's at strength nine, and then it has six plus D3. So you average eight shots versus six, so plus two shots every turn that you use it. Um, and then, yeah, did I forget any? Like, You've got the um, Curvo's Aquila, which is your basically your Vect style um, relic. Oh, you that's can, fun. Uh, yeah, increase the cost of their command points for a specific stratagem. Quite fun. Probably I've not going to see I've, it. I can think fun. of one I reckon. I can think of one that I reckon you boys wouldn't want to leave home without that hasn't come up. Oh, yet. the Barbican's key would that be? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one haunts my dreams. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's. They seem to print that quite often yeah. these days. I've noticed yeah. some books are getting more yeah. and more common. Um, and dare I say it, you know, the Barbican key in and of itself no. is not broken. Uh, the unit that it's attached to yeah. is very strong. Um, because when you think about it. You know, the army is actually quite undynamic. Yeah, this is exactly what we were saying. And actually, yeah. the Barbican key really adds something to the unit, you know, to the army that it yeah. really needs. Because if you can telegraph where the entire army can be and go, then it's, you know, it's very easy to control and manipulate. Um, however, the Barbican key allows you to actually be like, well, you know, I might key you this turn. Exactly. I might do this, you know. So. A necessary no, no, evil, I completely sure. agree, and I think it's it's a bit like with the redeploy, like you were saying. There are some of these things which it seems more and more in game design they recognise as universally very useful and, and and sometimes important for armies to have in order in order to keep up with other types of armies in the meta. And I think when I first saw it, I was a bit confused by it because I was like, "Oh, it's guard! It's you know what what's happening? Are they parachuting in reverse and then coming back down? Like what the, what the hell's happening?" But it's yeah. it's as you say, it's it keeps keeps an opponent honest and it, it's dynamism it injects dynamism into guards play it gives you an offense tool it gives you a reactive tool it gives you a way to deliver that damage mm. um and I, I i think it makes them more interesting to play and to play against it really so, especially in that sense it, in that sense it's a good relic when when your opponents want to well a lot of the case want to pressure you and really put um, a lot of their units forwards yeah. into you it kind of makes them have to think that next level right if i do push forwards yeah. with these units makes what am i choice. leaving behind yeah. me and i don't really want those fully re-rolling yep. Kasakin with brutal strength and all those <laughs> shots and mortal wounds coming in my rear, quite literally. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a powerful tool, and I I I think one one like that is I, I'm I'm completely content with. I think you know if it, if it was like a strat and you could teleport all your infantry around all the time, we'd start to be like, okay, what kind of tech have these boys got? But I I, I think it's a it's a useful tool to have, and I think yeah, you know, like you're saying, David, long term. It feels like there are lessons from Ninth about what the universally very cool and useful things for armies to have are, and it'll be interesting to see in the long run whether that makes it into the suite of tools that people can just access in different ways, one way or the other. Um, and we'll have to we'll have to see. Yeah. Speaking of universalities and things that maybe we shouldn't have, uh, transhuman <laughs> oh, physiology. <laughs> you know, so talking about talking about strategies yeah, now. Let's do I it. Guess, you know, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't know a lot of law. I'm probably the least law competitive player, but I, I'm pretty sure they're just normal yeah. humans. So, yeah, transhuman, yeah. 
it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weird one because it's, it's very so powerful. Funny. Um, you know, you think ten guardsmen, you know, what what the fuck yeah, are they yeah. gonna do, right? And then you're like, Well, I might transhuman and then your opponent all of a sudden goes, Well, my three Deathwing Terminators have, you know, nine <laughs> attacks, hitting on fours when you're on twos. Um, they might kill two, and you're like Bring it. Yeah. And then they're like, well, then you're not obsec, and you're like, I got eight dudes, and you're like, well, you know. Yeah. This out. So, we <laughs> so know, transhumans because we know the law standpoint. Just... It's while even a single yeah. Kian soldier refuses to yield, the fortress world is still stead to stand firm. Yeah. So it's because they're yeah. kind of like, so I think that's how they square it. It's the, K- it's the Kadian thing, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're just tough as nails. Yeah. But it's just the fact is, I, I'd, I'd commented it before as well. It's, there's an irony in the fact it's literally the same mechanic as a, a stratagem that was originally named after yeah. being better than a human. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny that, that yeah. the humans have got it. But I think, yeah, I like that it's tied to the Kadians. And again, you know, as we know, they're crazy and they, they really lay themselves on the line for it. And it's, it, but as you say, it just means that any 10 man unit, it anywhere on the board i mean i play i played against lees where it's you're just like oh no this is this is a huge issue that that, that math suddenly just spikes um and it's a really really yeah. powerful tool to have in the back pocket defensively as well um are there any oh, yeah, hot go. take i would like to see this i would like to see the stratagem change to just minus one uh, okay yeah you use it yeah, on yeah. activation Go a little bit yeah. more balanced um you know yeah absolutely what it is i think so in terms of the rest of the stratagems it's got the whole you know requiem of you know, get your relics, get mm. your warlord traits. It's very open in that sense. And and that's kind of what we'd expect from a mega book. You know, it's one of the OG big books. So it's going to have that full suite of, you know, you get your relics, you get mm. your warlord traits, you know, you can pump as many as you want into that. Um, and then there are two stratagems, which are extremely good. One of them is born soldiers, instead of auto wounding on five, sixes, becomes auto wounding on fives. And then you combo that with your Cassikins. When you deal a six to wound, you deal a mortal wound in addition. At capped at six wounds on the unit that you target. Yeah. That's the key part as well, yeah. of course, is that the unit you target. So you can deal six mortal wounds, six mortal wounds, six, mm. six mortal wounds. And if you split nine shots, nine shots, nine shots, you average about 5.6 damage or mortals per <sighs> squad. Uh, and then that's where you split it and that's where mm. you do your damage. Um, so those are the two big comp. That's like the big wombo combo. And then I think I mentioned before, you got Vengeful <laughs> Salute. So I like to think the Vengeful Salute is like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, pointing yeah. the finger. A little flag comes out the top of the tank <laughs> with like, just a middle finger drawn on it. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's if you don't explode, you can then shoot at Ballistic Skill 5, which means generally speaking, you yeah. shoot on fours, which is very good in the mm-hmm. guard mirror. Um, and then you've got some of your tanks have, you know, um, your vehicles have a suite of things, um, you know, two CP for minus one damage if you're armored or a battle yes. tank, which is, you know, most of the tanks, uh, which is really, uh, it's debatable how good that is. It's very quite situational and it's not really worth the CP in a lot of circumstances, I think. Um, and then you've got, um, uh, you've got minus one to hit, which is quite good in the, in, in the guard mm. mirror, of course. And, uh, oh, gee, vicious traps is quite fun. I think that's the, vicious those are the main is a little bit fun. Yeah. <laughs> just... Oh, vicious traps is really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bit of a gotcha on that one. So if you if you charge a unit entirely in an area terrain, and your opponent has slime Marbo, <laughs> then um, I was sad to see that he wasn't in your list, David. Then on a three up, you have slime Marbo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't, dude, I wanted to take slime Marbo, but I just couldn't bring. My, I was like, you know what? If I'm playing serious, like, well, I just you know, I'm just. Uh, he, he was good fun, but um, yes, yeah, so you could deal more wounds yeah. to people when yeah, they charge yeah. as well, and that's um, that's super powerful, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's a pretty good host oh, really of stratagems is. because you've got all your war and relics. You've got um, you know some damage ones. You've got defensive ones. You've got situational ones, and you've got you know shoot on death one CP is great. Oh yeah, top bracket. Oh yeah, one yeah, CP of course. Um, and between that, you know, and the relics you're already going to buy, you're probably at your maximum capacity of spending Completely. CP anyway. And but you know, having said that, there are a bunch of situational ones like you can shoot into combat. Is, you know, really yeah. situational. Mount up's quite good. Um, jumping back into a and I think maybe the yeah, this one. Yep. Yes. Oh, you're right. You can um, if a unit is uh, with wholly within three inches of a transport, you can jump back in after you've shot. And there's another really good one, which is one CP. You reroll all wounds yes. when you jump yeah. if you've disembarked the transport. That's this super turn. cool. So that combo is cool. Well with, um, yeah, I've got, got the one that you yeah, used. Well, it, really great nice. um, aplomb against me. Uh, Maverick maneuvers on the Sentinels. I, that was the one I was going to say, boys. That's the one that again ha- haunts my dreams. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> Fire and fade, basically. Uh, yeah, Maverick maneuvers, which is. Uh, 
Yeah, which is fire and fade, move, move six inches, which means you can move 14 inches from your current position, which is very good because for some reason they keep printing this rule as you can charge you yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So um, on Sentinels, um, really good as well. And Maverick Maneuvers are such well, a Well, that's, sweet that's it. Too, and you can you can um, just so. imagine these slightly loopy sort of Sentinel pilots who are just like, yeah, we're going, we're, we're going in, we're going in. We've got our little shade swords. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. And that one, again, it, 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 it harks back to that dynamism and reach, right? It's another way of actually, you can put stuff out there, you can make stuff happen. And I think, I think that's really nice for the army to have. All right, um, we're going to mm. move to key units. That's going to be the sort of the last, the last major stop on this journey. I mean, we, I guess it's whilst I've got you both here, it'll be fun to talk set- secondaries as well. But let's do some key units first. What are your favourites? What do you swear by? You go for it, Lee. Um, I think. Well, if we started with uh, HQs, um, the horse okay. lord himself, Leonidas, he's he's just such a great force multiplier, and the fact that he can fire out all horse the different multiplier. types of orders. Um, he mm-hmm. he's just amazing, um, and for his points as well, I think it's one hundred and seventy points. And if you compare that mm-hmm. to other factions, yep. for what you get for that one hundred and seventy points is bonkers. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm trying to think something chaosy, yep. which would be similar, but you get like a, a demon prince. With, who's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but actually, demon demon prince is fifteen points more. He's a little bit difficult. Mm. Go on, David. Sorry. Yeah. He's a little bit difficult to get damage mm-hmm. out of, um, I found, because he, he is a he is kind of on a night base and he's cavalry again, but it would be far too good if he was um, you know, actually able to get into combat yeah. very easily. But you know, the best way I've played him is just consistently have him, you know, as a force multiplier at the back. Reroll ones to hit and wound for your army is really powerful and his base is quite big, so um it's really good. And he, he enables full rerolls to hit and four rolls to wound on a target unit if you're yeah. poor as well. And he also just gives you one CP. So it's like, yeah. you know, just really, really not nice. playing. Yeah. So he's definitely yeah. the staple. He's where yeah, you start every list, sure. isn't he? Oh, definitely. And then and so other other great things. I think the the Krieg Marshal um, at 35 points mm-hmm. as an option from a Castellan is is amazing value. Um, and then you're not going to leave home without a command squad. Yep. Um, because, again, you've got yeah. so many options. It's so versatile, whether you want to throw... Um, what's the what's the term for the guys that hang around with them? Attaches? Is it attaches? <laughs> um, like the, your, yeah, oh, yeah, your bodyguards, your astropaths, your officers of the fleet. Um, you can yeah, kind the of off- sprinkle yeah, whatever. Flipping officer of the fleet, man. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> He's great for DSC. My poor DSC um, are like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> um, and then you can make them nigh on and killable with your your Bulgrin bodyguards. Um, is it Ogrin or Bulgrin? Mm-hmm. Bulgrin bodyguards. Um, and there are, there are relics Ogrin, where you yeah. can make them, I think it's the, the Death Mask of Alamius or something like that, which actually just makes everything completely unkillable in a command squad. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think those are your nice. staples for HQs. Do you want to add to the kind of next bracket, David? Yeah. No, I think there was, so there was one that everyone used to play as well, um, ah, Miss yeah, Lick yeah. Reed. And I think uh, she got FAQ'd recently. So I think people, me personally, I moved away from her. I know Nassim um, played her as well, but I think she's a bit suboptimal now. Uh, and then I was, I think I was the first person to play the Death Corps Marshal, who's the 35 point yeah. character. And the reason you play him is you put him in a transport. Now, normally you can only give out orders in the command phase, but in the transport, if you disembark a transport with an officer, you then can do an order. You, they can do, I think, up to their maximum orders yeah. immediately, but you only really need to do one usually. And you can order the unit that got out of the transport itself. So that's a really powerful tool to have. Um, and for 35-point character, you know, really yeah, solid. Super useful. Well. And then you've got onto your troop options. You've basically got more or less one choice here, I think, which is the KD Shock Troops. They are more or less just the best. There are niche cases and i don't think people have really explored including myself kind of the other options like maybe death core of krieg are interesting as well but kadia shock troops are the cheapest and they actually have very good damage because they auto wound on sixes to hit and then they explode on sixes oh, to hit cool. as well so really flexible there yeah so every six you roll auto that's wounds amazing. and counts yeah, another hit good. so yeah like not on the special weapons and the drum fit auto shotgun mm-hmm. and some of the last pistols but great for killing demons man <laughs> who you know yeah, yeah, zero. yeah. <laughs> that's so um yeah they're really strong but then the other option there is if you play a um um you know militarum mm-hmm. tempestus uh patrol then scions also yep. become troops and scions are you know legitimate um legitimately valid option you can get a squad of five for 55 points as opposed to um the 10k shock troops for 65 
but you don't get born soldiers on them and then you don't get access to mm. transhuman but they also naturally deep strike so they're a bit better at playing yeah. the secondaries but at the same time yeah you know they don't get some of the bigger options so yeah, in my opinion great balance mm. there as well um or you can just play a 10 man score for 110 points so that's um that's it for that and then elite slots you know you've more or less got um your Kassigan. So whether you play 10, 20, or 30, like that's your choice, but you want to play 10 with the Barbican key, of course. And then you've got some interesting characters there. You know, um, Lee alluded to the fact that I played Sly Marbo previously, who council boots on the ground. You know, I couldn't fault someone if they played him. He's he's he's, he's really one man army. Anyway. Exactly the kind of character I would take. Um, yeah, I just I live for those stupid he's characters. He's things fun. that will make a Billy go sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't resist it. I can't resist yeah. it. <laughs> And uh, I'll drop a little bit of the only law knowledge that I know is that Sly Marbu is uh, the acronym, or well, not the acronym, but uh, for uh, Rambo. Okay, Slow, okay, um, that, that's the Sly, reference. And then Marbo is a um, is a, is an acronym. Well, not yeah. acronym, but um, a thing for um, that's Rambo, really fun. Also. So that's kind that, of that a, explains a lot. Yeah, yeah, philosophy. I like that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, sh- I'll take the next one as well. I'll cover Fast Attack. Um, now, Fast Attack has. Uh, kind of one option in it realistically which is the the mm-hmm. armored sentinel which we kind of um, alluded to before as well uh, it has another option the scout sentinel which you pro- you want to play one kind mm-hmm. of forward deploy and the scout sentinel is the cheapest so he's my he's my go-to for the forward deploy otherwise you got you got rattlings there but armored sentinels are very very strong they it it, it was very surprising to me that many people in the meta didn't see um, the pocket that yeah. they really had because the defensive profile initially is very very powerful you know, your toughness, six, seven wounds, three up save, plus one save against damage one for 45 yeah. points. So that is extremely competitive if you look at it from a durability mm-hmm. standpoint. Um, but their output is not fantastic from a shooting standpoint, only D3 plasma shots. And I think that's where a lot that's, of people immediately exactly went, you know, I'm not, you know, yeah. those not for me. If you pay five points, you get a, you get the killer chainsaw, <laughs> something out of like a zombie <laughs> movie, um, which is actually, you want to, because in, in time, if you play them, you're going to find out that you'll be charging quite a lot. But one of the biggest benefits are for them that they are core and they have all of the keywords to this receive all of the That's orders. It. So you can order them any type of order. And what that means is that actually, as you become better and better, you'll realize that your Sentinel squad can string out and that you can hit a Perfectus order with a Sentinel squad and splash it all the way across to the other side of your army or a mechanized order, for example. So really really flexible and that's one thing that the that the codex really struggles with so they're a good complement to an army that is potentially one-dimensional if you're only playing tanks and troops in that sense and like we said you've got maverick maneuvers you can even put them in cover so you get a two-up mm. base save um and most of the games i've found you when your opponent tries to kill them they just get tar yeah. so they are a really good unit at bogging your opponent yeah. down and when the rest of your armies is such fantastic output Bogging your opponents down is really, really powerful because it it enable it sucks up all the air in the midboard and enables your opponent to have to deal with things Completely. right in front of them. So all around, I think, you know, great units. Some of their drawbacks are, of course, they've got an 80 millimeter base. So they are mm. quite large. And their antennae actually sticks out above a small room. Yeah, they're UKTC, a little too tall. So you yeah. can't write them with the ruin. Yep, which is a which is a noteworthy point. Um, if they couldn't do that, they'd be even, you know, significantly better. Um, but so, you know, the base size is a bit of a bit of a negative, but at the same time, the base size being really big is can be good because you can use them as a wall, so to speak. So you can gum people up, you know, they're a bit easy to get in combat because you can go half an inch on half an inch on some of your bases. So scouts, you know, scout sentinels, armored sentinels, really good. You know, Nassim plays three, one unit of three scout sentinels, gives, deploys them on the line, uh, well in no man's land. And then if you go first, you can give them full rerolls to hit mm. and wound you know, move into someone's army, shoot the hell out of something, charge something else. And then, you know, with full rolls to hit and wound because your core, you know, that's Absolutely. that's quite a good alpha strike turn one. Um, oh yeah, and they benefit from the- Yeah, they also. do. This <laughs> is it. It's, it's those synergies, isn't it? I think that's it. I think, and no one looking at that data sheet on its own would be like, oh, that's amazing. I do think the seven wounds catches people out over and over again, though. That's that's a really annoying point to be yeah. trying to get through, right? No matter no matter who you are, even before you start thinking about the fact they can also have minus one damage, which then makes them makes oh. them very very durable. Yeah. But it, they just combo off so many of the other cool things we've talked about um, and help you project and and get and reach and cause all kinds of mayhem. And that's that's fun. I love, I've always loved Sentinels, so it's nice to see them out and about. They, they're very reminiscent of those Star Wars yeah. little chicken walkers. So it's nice to see. Yes, oh, that's exactly, the next thing for exactly. you, Lee. Convert and the those. New CW's. <laughs> yeah, 
And the new GW um, models oh, are amazing. fantastic as well. They're, the okay. new GW signals are amazing. So you put some little... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get like the logs, the logs crushing one of the... Oh, yeah, you could have some fun with it, Lee. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, yeah. So I think I think David has very generously teed you up to do heavy support here, Lee, which Lovely. is nice of him, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's quite a short one because you're really only going to take a couple of things here. Um, mortars, 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 and all the mortars. Um <laughs> Again, yeah. it's the synergies. It's all about the synergies. The fact that you can put the full rerolls mm-hmm. to hit and wound on them. You can use the finial with them. Uh, it just makes them insanely good. Um, and in the mirror, um, it is almost a little mini game of mortars as well in there. Do you target the mortars? Do you target the infantry? What are you going to do with it? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yep. So they're, they're amazing. And again, if you want to get one up on your opponent by scuppering their boots on the ground score you can you can focus down their infantry um which is a great way to kind of almost think about the mirror possibly looking at those secondary points um yeah you've got your layman rust battle tanks which yep. are obviously a massive staple um and as david did say though i think you do you are seeing people just slowly kind of dropping the numbers to allow you to have access to more of the yep. actual point scoring elements your secondary scoring elements within your list mm. Um, to get that inflexible mm. command, the boots on the ground. Yep. Um, again, P- Lehman Russ loadouts. I think you can't really go wrong with the um, the plasma. The plasma's the, the, the way forward. It's plasma's been very good. Great yeah. output. Um, as you see a lot of people running the Vanquisher. I've had no joy with the Vanquisher. You have to spend points on it to get it stuff. <laughs> You're always going to roll twos. Um, yes, you are on both <laughs> dice every time. <laughs> You rolled a two against me as well. Just the heads up. Um, did, you, did you re did you re-roll it, Lee, or did you just let it go? I just, I just oh, tried a little bit inside, I think. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Lame, Lame. Unfortunately Lee decided it was I was just gonna say, unfortunately Lee decided that um he was gonna start the game on one CP, which uh, meant that he uh, goes to two CP. So when he Cassican bombed me, he couldn't uh, re-roll his no. one shot at this. So it was that was the one little thing I yeah, got yeah, there. Yeah. To... <laughs> yeah, my list design was awful, I have to admit. But I just wanted all the fun stuff in there. I wanted all the relics and strategy. Yeah, I, I was... look, I, I do it all the yeah. time, man. I, yeah, I always do it. Like, yeah, it's so funny. Um, and then I think, like I think I've mentioned it at the very start, the um, the Forge World artillery pieces, your Medusas, your quad launchers, and your Earthshaker carriages mm. are something mm. to look at for the future. Um, if you look at the profile of the Earthshaker carriage, yep. it's strength 10, minus 3, 2 damage. You can put the regimental mm-hmm. order for plus 1 to hit, additional minus 1 AP. You are going to suffer the problems of shooting, especially on UKTC, going through the middle of the board to hit stuff over some of the dense terrain that's sometimes in there. But if you look at a lot yep. of the maps, um, yep. you'll have at least a couple of objectives which are not covered by that negative to hit. Um, and in a world where we're going to see more Vengor launchers trying to come after your infantry or the mirror match where you've got those mortars at the back of the board, nothing picks them up mm. quite as well as an Earthshaker carriage with their two damage, <laughs> strength 10. Yep. Yeah. It's it's a lovely profile to have. Um, the cost yeah. is... In fact, the, the... Sorry, David? The field ordnance battery is not yeah. durable yeah. as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so these guys, yeah, they're 120, 120 points for one. So it gets expensive. And when I've been testing yeah. them out a little bit, it you want three. So you're looking at 360. <laughs> oh. so that, but you can pick up a Layman Russ a turn in the mirror match quite happily. Uh, it is for that me, is it's, terrifying. It's also quite army limiting, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because don't they have a f- big footprint? You've got to hide them all in the back somewhere and then you can fit definitely, the rest in. Like... If you put your mortars on the uh, <laughs> on the shelves. <laughs> oh, the, the mortars are going on the second floor. And what, firing a rocket into the third floor? <laughs> it's ridiculous. You're a bad man, um, Lee. I don't, can, I don't condone do this. <laughs> I am but, under the impression that they don't have a base as well. So oh, they don't, okay. Or just, they don't, um, right, don't okay, okay. Close okay. Legs, well, we'll see them, them smaller as well. <laughs> um, so, 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, goodness. I gracious. don't know. I don't know. It's worth. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. It's interesting. It's definitely we'll a good see. for the yeah, mirror because you can, can already clear out all your opponent's coming, mortars in one go. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, Spicy. they're expensive. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, there's a lot of indirect that hasn't been yep. explored actually, and I've been thinking about. Um, you know, the, the, that's the cool thing about the book is as the meta shifts, you've really got. You know, you've got good suite of options there. Um, you know. The death strike is not no, awful. not at all. It's not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like if someone played one against me and just kept moving it, I would be like, "That's that's really yeah. fucking annoying." <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and then uh, yeah, so you know, there's, I wish the Trojan support vehicle could give you another shot, but for some reason, you know, they uh, if, so, if someone puts a uh, um, death um, strike right over your lead. corner mortar pit, that's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, some of the guys were t- trying to get me That's to plug true, it into yeah. GSC just to nuke stuff with it, like, and then like pin someone in with like bikes, and then be like, "Oh no!" But I don't, I don't think. Yeah, you know what's, sorry, after you, David. You know what's um, you know what's not bad though is you can place it on an objective. You know, a lot of objectives in UKTC yeah. have a ruin that are that um, it's halfway mm. through the objective. So what you can do is you can place it right on the part of the objective where they're in their ruin and you can't see them. And then next turn, come down. If they don't move, if they move off it, then you know yeah. they're off the objective, right? But if they don't move, you know you nuke them with the god spear. Um, so that's oh, actually not yeah completely. bad, right? Like if you just paid, you know, if you just played a vehicle that got you four points from doing something like that, then actually yeah. that's pretty good. Um, and if they, you know, if they move off it, you just leave it there, or I don't know something like maybe it kills five infiltrators, right? Like not that bad. There's a lot of circumstantial things, and I think you know in the codex if you, you've got that 200 flex points so actually a, a really good player can be like actually in this situation where i'm expecting to play this at the last part of the tournament like this would actually yeah. be really good and you can actually kind yeah. of realize that and you could be a total badass and play you know a yeah. dish right so yeah completely yeah. It's, it's one of those things that's sort cool of like that? it is a meme but it's also it, it it's a tool it has it has some very real applicability and it's just starting to figure out how to use it yeah. and as you say whether you've actually got the give in the list to, to be to be using that as well it's whatever it is it's awesome yeah. it's a it's a huge flipping rocket coming in that's a lot of fun but <laughs> Lee, I was going to say, um, Rogel Dawn, you still a oh, fan? Oh, Rogel like, Dawn. You enjoy? I know you, you it. <laughs> oh, he's coming to you. the Rogel Dawn. <laughs> um, I like it. It's got... He loves it. I still. like it. I like it. It's got silly yeah. amounts of output. It's it's basically one and a half <laughs> layman rust, isn't it? It's one and a half layman rust for your points. Um, the toughness yeah. nine, I think, yeah. is great. I think it kind of... In a tank battle, you want a toughness yeah. nine tank. Um, the fact that you can give it full <laughs> rerolls to hit. Sense, yeah. So when um, when he's yeah. when he's tired of buffing up Kasakin, he can put his full uh, rerolls to hit onto your Rogal Dawn. Um, I think there's game in a Rogal Dawn. Yeah. Um, and I'm willing to persevere with it. <laughs> For sure. And <laughs> yeah, well, the American meta has been very Rogal Dawn um, yeah. prominent, right? It has. So you know, I mean, obviously, there's certain. There's certainly huge amounts of play in it. Um, I definitely, you know, if someone was like, actually, I do this with it, I do this with it, and I and I do this with it. I, you know, me personally, I would look at that and say, look, I think that's a little bit suboptimal. But as far as my criticism goes, um, a little bit suboptimal is like on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, on the <laughs> yeah, good yeah. side of <laughs> of me. So you know, I'm looking at like bleeding edge, like extremely optimized yeah. everything. So like you know, me, I wouldn't personally play it, but you know, that doesn't mean you can't win no, a tournament with it. It's still, you know, great profile. And as you said slap the four rolls to hit on it and the in the mirror like it's becomes a lot more becomes a piece of reliability where Russ, Russ is you know you don't necessarily yeah. have that right so yeah and I mean T9 means you're wounding with melters on fives so minus one to wound against one of the most common profiles yeah. in the game yeah. at the moment is um, certainly not bad <laughs> at all do you get to shoot with both its turret weapons on death or yeah you do yep I believe so I believe because it, um, it, it counts pretty as nice the, yeah, too. just turret weapons salutes go that's pretty vengeful yeah <laughs> And the model, <laughs> and the model is pretty sweet as well. So yeah, it does you know, look awesome. Fun. I can absolutely believe that it's tearing up the US meta because it it's a very US looking tank. It's very, it's very, it's it's very much up their alley. All right, You're all right, boys. I'm conscious we've run a little bit over. So- 
<laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. We're running. We're running a little over time. So what I'm going to do is just get you to comment a little bit on the secondary game, and then we can call it a night. This has been a really fun conversation. So I mean, for, for you guys, how do you see the guard secondary game? And um, what what do you think the sort of game plan is? I will yep. wrap this one up. I will wrap this one up very quickly. You take inflexible command every game. You take boots on the ground every game, and your only decision points are whether you take raise the banners or retrieve perfect data. That's what you do every single game. And if you're not doing that, your opponent is either giving you a secondary and maybe you take that, but that game plan is extremely solid. And having that every single game in the bag is really, really good. So your list design should be able to execute that game plan every single time. And if it can't, trust me, your list building is not where it should be to win a tournament or to run deep. So those are the only decisions you make. It means making playing the rest of the game you know you can focus yeah, on that perfect <laughs> no, brilliant absolutely brilliant okay right thank you very much to both of you i really really appreciate that um david looking forward to seeing you out and about on the circuit taking some more names um in the future and really looking forward to seeing <laughs> what happens with um with ignite as well um and obviously the the 40k fireside as both those continue to evolve so thank you so much for coming on really appreciate it hopefully we'll get you on again sometime in the future um amazing amazing Thanks. all right that is us we are checking out um get out there guard players there's loads of stuff to do you've just been shown some of the ropes get out there make the most of it have fun with it um, and we will see you all again next time bye-bye